Hey guys, how's it going? This is a Shun Premier 8 inch chef's knife. Now I bought this knife for $75 used off eBay. If you're familiar with the Shun Premier line, it's one of the uh, higher tiered lines for Shun. This knife brand new retails for $180. Used, I think it should really go around for $125 to $150. Um, and so for seventy-five dollars, um, I got the I got a heck of a heck of a bargain. But there's a reason why this knife um, costs seventy-five dollars, and not um, at the typical used knife price point. Before I get into that, I want to go into pretty much the details of the knife. The knife has an all pack of wood handle here. All right, in the back, the butt of the knife, you see the Shun logo. Um, this handle is different from the Shun Classic line, which I also own. Um, it, it uses the same VG Max steel as the Shun Classic line, um, and it's got that 32 layers of Damascus, Damascus steel layering, which gives it a total of uh, 33, 33 layers of steel that make up the blade. Um, one, not, one difference between this and the Shun Classic is, uh, what you see here is the, des the design. It's, there are a lot of dimples here, right? Hammered, hammered dimples, and per Shun's website, these dimples are are uh, more than just aesthetic. They are used to help release food off the blade easier. Um, in my experience, any knife that I've had that has a dimple, it doesn't really help release food easier. In fact, I think when it's when like if you're chopping onions and so forth. And the onions are moist. It kind of creates some sort of suction or some sort of you know moisture stickiness retention between um, the the dimples and and the food and the onions. So I was never really a fan of these dimples. And plus, these things, these dimples, are really hard to wash because when you're lightly scrubbing the blade with um, you know like a sponge scrubber and so forth, um, it's kind of hard to get. You know, all the debris off because you know the, the dimples are indented inwards and so uh, after you wash a knife and then you dry it off you might see some extra crusting or extra stuff left over which makes which makes you wash the knife again uh, so that was really annoying um, um, from a comfort level this knife is much more comfortable than the Shun Classic I always had an issue with the Shun Classic line um, I have a really weird relationship with Shun, even though I do own a lot of Shun knives, I've always ended up either not using them or, or, not sell, or, uh, or selling them. The thing is, I've never purchased a Shun knife at full retail cost because I don't think they're worth it at full retail cost. I would not buy this knife uh, at $180 brand new. I would not buy the Shun Classic at um, $120, $130, you know, $100. $30, whatever the market rate is for the Shun Classic, I would not buy that brand new. I would rather get it um, heavily discounted or maybe have a stack coupons. But that's how I always purchased my Shun knives, um, either 25% off or even up to 50% off, depending on the deals I can get. So this knife here retails for $180, um, and I bought this for $75 used. And $75 used is a ve very cheap price for this knife um, because... Um, you know this this knife it's not a bad knife it's still a quality knife and seventy five dollars for this knife is I think it's highway robbery it's, it's a steal uh, at this price and why did I buy this knife and why was it a seventy five dollars well because the tip was broken um, more like chipped off but it wasn't a, like a big chip that I thought was so bad that I couldn't repair it so I took a chance I bought, I bought the knife and um, I spent the weekend repairing that chip tip. I have my own sharpening setup, my own my own whetstones, my own little sharpening station. So I knew that I could I could repair the tip. Uh, I've repaired um, the, ch the chips on, on, on the blades of other knives before, so I do have some experience there. Uh, but you know repairing a chip tip was, going, was my first time and I spent a lot of time in the past week week or so watching a lot of YouTube videos watching what other um, you know, knife sharpeners or knife YouTubers were doing in regards to repairing a chip. And um, 
after watching those videos, I had a really high confidence level because a lot of the techniques they used, I already knew. And then a lot of the techniques they used for repairing uh, a chip tip were also used by other YouTubers. So I knew that their methods, their techniques were, were effective. And, um, and so I recorded the entire process to share with you. And um, so um, let's get started. In, uh, let's get started with the video. And you'll see how I reconditioned the tip and this knife back to pretty much a brand new state. All right, let's get started. Here we are at my sharpening station. As you can see, I have a few whetstones here. First off, I have my Course 120 to 40 whetstone. And then here, I have my 1000 grit whetstone. And then on the right side, I have my 6000 grit finishing whetstone. And since I will be grinding this knife down quite a bit, I'm going to start, of course, with the the 120 grit and just to make sure I don't slip, my fingers don't slip or the wet stone doesn't slip, I'm just going to put a wet towel on my bridge here. Right, and I'll put this here and I will start to fasten the whetstone to the holder. I'll make sure this is nice and tight. So here we are with the 120 grit whetstone. The bottom half of the stone is 240. Of course, I'm going to use the coarser side to grind down the tip. Now, I don't want to use the entire surface area of the whetstone to grind down the tip because if I go into the middle too much, um, I'm going to have some scratches and it's going to make the stone uneven. So instead, I'm going to focus the grinding on the outside areas of the stone and maybe even the, the edge here and so forth. Now this blade is pretty hard and I do know that it will take me a bit of time to grind this down. Uh, I don't have a diamond, a diamond plate or anything like that because well they're expensive and since I don't really repair knives for a living and I don't really spend a lot of time repairing knives, um, I'm not gonna spend the money to purchase a diamond plate to grind down the tip. So because of that, it will take me a bit more time to grind down the tip with the 120 quit whetstone. Yep, this thing, this tip is in really good shape. Uh, haven't really changed the profile of the blade that much really uh, because that tip really it was not a big chip so as you can see uh, it might be a little bit more rounded as it tapers off from see this portion of the belly down to the tip but uh, for the most part uh, it seems to be very very even to the eye all right all right so I have restored the tip, as you can see. So the next part here is I'm going to start restoring the, the edge. So I'm going to flip the whetstone over to the 240, then I'm going to move to the 1000 whetstone, and then I'm going to finish off with the 6000 polishing whetstone. So we're almost there. Um, grinding down the tip was a lot quicker than I thought it would be, so uh, I'm glad it didn't take me a long time. Uh, I did get a little rugged up there, I had to take off my hoodie, but uh, for the most part, uh, this has been relatively painless. Alright, I'm going to flip over this coarse side to the 240 side. Some more water on it. Make sure my hands are relatively dry before I handle the knife again. Alright, and I am going to work. Now 
Now I have a weird relationship with the Shun Knives. The first Shun Knife set I ever bought was the Ken Onion 10-piece knife set. And I bought it because my coworker at the time was really into knives and he could not stop raving about the Shun Ken Onion knife set. And he said that he rec highly recommend that I purchase it. So me, like an idiot who really didn't know too much about knives at that point in my life, I bought the Ken Onion and Shun knife set. I thought it was pretty cool. But I did not like it. For some reason, just the way the Shun knives, uh, Ken Onion Shun knives are designed, the way the handle is designed and the way the blade is designed, I just could not get used to it. And what I did was, for the knives, which I did buy at a, at a heavy discount, I think the set retailed for over $1,200 at the time and I bought it for 600 bucks. And I got the 8 inch uh, Ken Onion Shun Chef knife, the utility knife, and the 4 inch knife. And then I had a serrated, a serrated blade, a bread knife, a large carving knife, uh, and I think a fillet knife. The, the sharp, the, the honing steel, and the, the bamboo knife holder. So all that for $600, which I thought at the time was a really good deal. The thing is, I did not like the set too much, and I ended up selling those knives individually. And the funny thing is, I was able to sell those knives for for um, over $100 to $200 each. Uh, I did keep some knives. I kept the fillet knife, which um, I think is the only knife I like in the in that series. So um, all my other knives are either have been sold or waiting to be sold. And I, and from my understanding, the Kent Onion Shun knife series um, is no longer being being made. So who knows, um, if I hold on to certain versions of those knives, maybe they'll go up in value. Alright, so, did not like the Shuns, the Kent Onion versions anyway. And then my other friend, who also loves Shun, she had the Shun Santoku, and she was telling me about how great the Santoku was. Well, the Santoku style is not made for my food cutting and food chopping preparation style. So I actually stayed away from Santoku's, but she was raving how the, 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 the classic version of Santoku was pretty good, it was comfortable. And, and it so happened, I was able to buy the Shun 8 inch classic with the 6 inch utility knife and the paring knife I'm guessing it was the the knife the Shun classic starter set I bought that for about $150 maybe even less from Macy's I was able to take advantage of some of those year-end deals and I also stacked a coupon on it and so I got the knives I was very excited with the Shun classics as soon as I started to use the Shun Aiden Chef knife, it didn't feel right in my hand. Immediately, I felt I felt something was off, and I tried using it a few more times. But um, I am a big user of the pinch grip when I when I cook. Uh, I grew up using a Chinese meat cleaver or a Chinese vegetable knife in the restaurant, and. From day one, you know, when that, that Chinese vegetable knife was placed in my hands, I was taught to use the pinch grip. And for some reason, that Shun 8-inch classic, when I used the pinch grip on it, it didn't feel right. It actually hurt my fingers. Uh, that knife set doesn't get any use. And for some reason, I don't know why, I have not sold that set yet. Uh, maybe because I bought the knife, you know, in a set really cheap. And I, was, I might as well just hang on to it for a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll give it to one of my friends or, you know, give it to a family member who's really into knives. Who knows, but um, it's been about four years since I bought that set and I have not used it ever since um, purchasing it after 
you know, first couple of days. So I think I used it for two or three days, and then I just stopped using using the knife. And, and so when I was when I was on eBay, I was looking for some knives, some damaged knives to play with, to purchase to play with, uh, so I can practice my knife sharpening skills. Um, this knife actually came into the picture. And because this knife came into the picture, I figured, you know what, $75, the tip was broken off, but overall, based on the picture, the quality of the knife looked pretty damn good. And so I took that leap of faith, paid $75, and the knife really came as advertised. It, you know, the when the, the seller was describing the knife, it really came as described. So. Um, very, very happy that the the seller of the knife was very honest. And I think seventy-five dollars for a knife like this with a with a broken tip is a steal at this point because you really don't need much to restore the tip, right? This whetstone here, I think, cost me about eight bucks. Um, you know, the bridge, this wooden bridge I have here. I made that myself. My pan here uh, is a food serving pan that uh, was given to me. It's a used pan, but hey, it served its purpose. And then I have some of these home, home, home quality Kingstones, which I bought about I don't know, five or six years ago. And so um, over the years, you know, don't I don't really have to spend too much money in terms of of knife repair. I feel like I have all the tools that I need and everything else is pretty much relatively inexpensive. And so when I when I bought this knife, I figured, is this knife going to be as uncomfortable as the Shun? Um, maybe I would just repair it and then sell it for, sell it back on eBay, maybe for $125, $130. Who knows? But funny thing is, the the handle of this blade uh, of this knife is much better than the Shun Classic. The the way this this handle is contoured to my hand it actually feels very good. This is the first Shun knife that I've, I've held in my hands that does not hurt my fingers when I use the pinch grip. So now I have a dilemma. I bought this knife to learn to repair and hopefully to sell it to make some money but now it actually feels really good in my hand and I don't know if I'm gonna keep this for a while start using it as uh, one of my primary chef knives um, I just don't know yet but in the meantime I may just use it in my daily prep and cooking and see how that goes I also I also owned a Shun Fuji, Fuji edition knife, six inch chef knife, and that was a beautiful knife. I bought that knife based on looks. I did not buy it for performance because um, I just liked the way it looked, and because I liked the way it looked, I didn't want to use it. And for over a year, it sat on my kitchen countertop, not being used. Rather than having a couple hundred bucks sit on my countertop, I sold that knife. And so, my relationship with Shun knives just hasn't been that great. Uh, hopefully this knife may change my mind. Alright, so I'm going to switch this to the 1000 grit stone. 1000 grit whetstone. Alright, I have the 1000 grit whetstone on the on the whetstone holder now and at this point I'm gonna, gonna try to get this this blade as sharp as possible before I move on to the 6000 grit sharpening stone or should I say the 6000 grit polishing stone I'm gonna use the same motions as I did when I was trying to fix the tip so same motion And as with any knife, it doesn't matter how sharp it is, when you are sharpening a knife, handling a, handling a knife, you want to respect the knife. When I first 
start again, two knives. I did not really respect the knives. And what I mean by respect the knives is, you know, not appreciating the knives for what they are, not understanding the craftsmanship that goes into the knives, not understanding the material of the knives. Just in general, I was really ignorant about knife care and, and knife respect. And when, it's, when I mean knife respect, I mean really appreciating the knife as a tool and as a work of art. Um, because these knives can get are so sharp, they can nick you and break skin without you even realizing it. Um, one time I was I was chopping onions and and I realized that I was only chopping onions. I was also making bloody onions. Uh, what happened was I had a global knife, the global uh, global chef knife, eight inch chef knife. That was one of the first knives that I bought, chef knives that I bought when I started getting into knives. I was chopping the, veg the veggies, the onions on the chopping board. I put the knife aside and I put the onions near the knife. Well, when I put the knife down, I was an idiot. I put the knife edge, the blade, towards myself. Right, so imagine this as a cutting board, like this. I put the knife right here, and I also push the onions up towards the knife. So guess what happened when I went to grab the onions to put into the pan? Bloody onions. Um, did not feel the nick on my skin. Did not even feel the cut, um, but I saw the cut and I saw the onions. And so that was the first time that uh, made me understand the importance of understanding the knife, respecting the knife, and that if you're not careful, these things can do some damage. So I'm gonna do the left side here. I don't think I will ever master the art of knife sharpening. Uh, I've been doing this for many years. Um, I feel like I'm just still learning how to sharpen a knife. There's something very, very therapeutic about knife sharpening. Um, there's, there's so much perfection involved and th that I think I will never get to that level. Uh, but I do enjoy sharpening a knife. Um, I don't sh get knives really sharp because I need them really sharp for home cooking. Um, I don't need a really sharp, sharp knife for, for home cooking. I don't need a knife that's as sharp as a razor blade. A, sh a knife that can pretty much take off all my hairs off my arm with one, one slow pass. Um, I don't need the knife to be that sharp. Um, I, dice, I dice garlic, tomato, celery, carrots, onions. You know, the basic stuff, you know, I'll, I'll cut meat, but I'll never cut through bone with a knife like this. I won't cut through anything hard. Um, I will not use this to, to slice open, um, like, uh, semi-frozen foods. I will not use this to cut open a watermelon because as hard as these, these blades are, um, they, they are also brittle. Um, the wrong tweak, right, um, hit, um, hitting something hard at the wrong point of impact can damage and chip the blade. And so for, for blades like this, I really just keep it to the basics. Soft foods and vegetables and nothing hard. If I need to go through anything hard, uh, cartilage, hard cartilage, maybe things that, that are between bones, such as um, cutting, cutting uh, chicken wings, you know, removing the wingette from the wing, um, I will use a, a cleaver for that. Uh, I would never use a knife like this for that. Uh, these knives were not made for that type of type of cutting. Uh, as great as chef's knives are, they are not one size fits all. It's all going to depend on your food prep style. If you cut through a lot of frozen foods, if you cut through a lot of bone, a sinew, like like or like frozen stuff. Uh, 
best reserved for a knife like a cleaver and so forth. Something that's really heavy duty, something that's heavy, and something that's made to stand up to abuse. Alright, so I feel like I'm almost done here in regards to this 1000 grit stone. I am incorporating some curves, some bending to this process because I don't want to lose the profile of the belly. I am primarily a what you call a rocket chop when it comes to pre preparation so I I depend on the belly, the curve of the belly to have a really smooth chopping style. And that's why I don't use Sentokus because it's too straight. Alright so we just finished with the 1000 grit whetstone and I have here on my holder now my 6000 grit polishing whetstone. And here's the knife. Uh, if it looks a little different, it's because it does look different. I put some gaff tape around the midline part of the knife and that's because after I used the 1000 grit Whetstone, I was inspecting the knife and I must have slipped somewhere during my sharpening and I actually had a scuff, created a scuff mark somewhere around here on the blade which uh, didn't make me too happy. I do have polishing compound that will actually remove the scuff marks but since I did not tape the knife ahead of time, I created extra work for myself. So after I finished polishing this knife, I will have to put some of the polishing compound and buff away the, the scuff marks. So hopefully um, this thin layer of gaff tape I put on uh, will, will prevent any further scuffing in case I do um, slip. And um, gaff tape is great because you can peel this tape off and will not leave any sticky residue on the knife. So I'm going to get started and start the polishing process with this this whetstone. Right. The thing is when you tape the knife up you don't want to put too much tape on the knife because then the, the you know the thickness of the knife is going to get you know it's, it's going to get thicker and so if it gets thicker and we put the knife down on the whetstone well then the extra the width the thickness is going to cause extra friction onto the whetstone and what that's going to do is that might even mess up your, your sharpening angle. Now, when it comes to sharpening angles, I don't go with anything in particular. I go with how the way the knife feels. With Shuns, they use a 16 degree sharpening angle. My, my set of Globals, they use, I believe, an 11. Uh, so very steep angles, very sharp angles. And um, for, I believe, my Victorinix, uh, my Victorinix, Fibrox, I think that one is at around a 20. I, I, I do remember most European style knives, Wustoff and so forth, um, their knives are are at a 20 to 22 degree angle. So, but, you know, um, the angle doesn't matter much to me as long as the blade is sharp and can produce really good cutting results. So, same motion here, less pressure coming back. Um, more pressure pushing forward. This is for the right side of the knife. We'll incorporate some of that curve. Just make sure we keep that convex curve on the belly. And of course, this is a 6,000 grit whetstone, so it's not going to be, it's, it's not very loud. Now the left side of the face, is the left side of the knife, um, I'm going to put pressure as I pull back. One of the hardest things um, when it comes to sharpening a knife, um, looks like the tape here is starting to roll a little bit, so I'm going to remove this piece. Um, one of the things with sharpening a knife is that 
you know you want to keep this entire edge when you're sharpening as parallel perpendicular and flat as possible but sometimes you know when you pull back um, the blade will sometimes rise and that does, you know, you you're, then you start to mess up the angle of, of, of the blade and you get stuck in a really inconsistent blade edge. Um, that is one of my biggest struggles. I'm working really hard to fix that. Um, maybe that's why I had a scuff mark is because when I'm just doing it this way, um, my elbow, my elbow, I dropped my elbow. And when I dropped my elbow, um, then I just went like this. So um, I'm working really hard to really keep my elbow up when it comes to doing this. Um, sitting down is still uh, my my preferred my preferred method of of uh, my preferred method of sharpening. Uh, looks like here uh, should be okay now. Uh, okay, I'm down to this level. I don't need I don't need the, uh, the tape anymore. I'm almost there. Just getting that rhythm, making sure my arms are straight, making sure the blade is nice and flat on a stone, making sure I don't drop my elbow too much because I do have a bad habit of dropping my elbow. Alright, so we're almost there. Alright, left side. And, you know, there is no right or wrong, like, tried and true technique when it comes to knife sharpening. Um, a lot of these motions I'm doing here, you know, I learned from watching other people on YouTube. It's like, these are not my techniques. These are just standard techniques that everyone uses. And, um, you know, and when it comes to getting that right positioning, whether you're sitting down or you're standing up, you know, that's going to be a matter of, you know what works best for you, right? You know your 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 comfort. For me, I like doing a sitting down, uh, and then there's also stamina, right? Um, you know when you're sharpening a knife, you don't want to rush through sharpening the knife. Uh, so stamina does you know play a part, but you know, the more you get used to sharpening knives, the more you get used to the motion. Um, your stamina is just going to build. Your arms won't get as tired. Um, you'll 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 re keep reminding yourself to, you know, like for example, I keep reminding myself to apply pressure, but not too much pressure when I'm drawing back or, or or pushing forward. And I'm always reminding myself to not drop that elbow so much. So when I when I go across, I can maintain good contact with the whetstone. And you know these are things that you'll probably have to figure out on your own. Um, everyone's knife sharpening style is gonna differ somewhat, even though the techniques are going to be pretty much similar. You now, um, my advice is, you know, go with you know what works for you uh, in terms of comfort, because you want to be comfortable when it comes to knife sharpening. You don't want to. Be cramped. You don't want your arms to cramp up. You don't want to fatigue too too fast. And uh, all of, all of that's just going to take time, effort, patience. Um, I'm known to be pretty patient. Uh, my wife says I'm a very patient person. Uh, complete opposite of her. Uh, but I do find knife sharpening to be very soothing, very zen-like. When I am sharpening a knife. Uh, aside from talking to you, um, I don't really think about anything else. So um, it's a great way for me to, to to clear my head. I just find the strokes to be very, very, very uh, hypnotic. All right, so I'm just gonna do a few more passes, and uh, once that is done, I am going to strap the knife so I can refine the edges that's important to me 
Um, and hopefully uh, this knife will be just as sharp, uh, if not sharper, once it comes out of the box. All right, so the tip's been restored, very sharp. Um, blade is very sharp from sharpening on the 6,000 grit polishing stone. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna strap the knife. I'm gonna to try to get the, both edges, pretty much realign the edges as straight as possible to get a really fine cutting edge and for this process, um, I my intention is not to uh, do what I did earlier by scraping away, grinding away the metal. But really, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go go and with on the right angle, slowly draw the knife down, no pressure, let gravity do the work, and using my fingers at the beginning of the at the tip of the knife. to make sure that this knife is, the blade is touching the entire surface of the whetstone. So I'm going to do quite a number of passes for this on both sides. All right, we're at the point of testing how sharp the knife is. As I said before, I'm going to use my Shun 8-inch Classic Chef's Knife to, to take a benchmark. Now, this knife is pretty much brand new. Um, used it probably three times in the past four years. Um, like I said, I'm going to hold this knife here. For some reason, um, this edge here on the top really hurts my fingers. But... If I hold held the same way of the Shun Premier, there is no pain at all. So let's test this out. Seems it's pretty sharp. Not a not a problem with the shun. So let's try it with my my knife, the one I just sharpened. Well, I feel like it's definitely sharper than the shun. Hope you found the video interesting. I tried to make it interesting. Um, hope you learned a little more about um, this knife. Hope you learn more about my relationship with Shun, uh, which hasn't really been the greatest. I am going to spend some time using this knife now. I'm going to put away some of my other chef knives and I'm going to try to use this exclusively for for a week or two to see how it really feels in my hand. Like I said in the video, uh, this knife does feel a lot more comfortable than my other Shuns in the past. So uh, who knows, maybe I'll just end up using this knife much more uh, just because of its comfort level. and. And for me, um, when it comes to using a knife, the sharpness of the blade uh, takes a back seat to the comfort level. I don't care how sharp the blade is, if this knife, or if a knife is very sharp, but really uncomfortable to handle, then what's the point? You're not gonna be comfortable in using the knife anyway. So um, this handle, um, does seem promising. It's very simple. It's round, you know, it's it's in the oval shape. Yet there's like a roundness to the bottom. It's got a little belly to to the handle as well, right? Um, but it you know it fits it fits my hands actually really well. Um, so um, this contour actually reminds me a little bit of like the like global knives that have like a little contour, but uh, with a much steeper taper towards the end. But um, this doesn't have the steep taper like a global does. But uh, I am digging the the feel. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So thank you for watching. Um, my channel covers a bunch of different categories because I have a lot of hobbies and interests and I will probably just make videos, um, you know, on things that, you know, just, um, interest me or things that I will find interesting. 
Until next time, have a great day.